Another thing that's coming down the pipeline is, um, as you may know, the, um, the state legislature authorized um, uh, or actually required the creation of an instructional materials portal where we would um, sort of uh, a holding bin where we house all the instructional materials. But uh, in addition, they wanted um, kind of a consumer reports feature or a review feature on efficacy. Um, and so um, what our plan is to do is to sort of gather information in a, in a um, uh, comp comprehensive rubric involving feedback from um, uh, teachers around the state as well as um, sort of experts in the field of, of literacy um, uh, to uh, create a framework to analyze the nature of curriculum. Right? Not just it, are the TEKS covered, but how well structured is this? How easy is it to follow? How easy is it to be used as a teaching tool? How integrated are the supports for different student groups um, uh, and the like? Um, and part of that work uh, will involve us even asking the field. So think of as we transition to A through F accountability, we'll be able to look at the A's in terms of student impact and even isolate in A's in reading. And then um, kind of see if there's any patterns about what instructional materials are the highest performing campuses using relative to others. And then from that data, just include that in, um, in information in the instructional materials portal. So that's useful information for folks that are in the you know, curriculum um, business so that they can get a sense of what seems to be, you know, have a, have a, have a relationship with, with um, actual student impact as effectively as possible. So that will also, um, uh, you know, given the new statutory framework, that will also come out in support of the um, SLR uh, instructional materials um, but as you can imagine, accumulating that data from the field um, and seeing it with actual student outcomes data, it's going to take some time for that to, to, build, um, to build out. So there'll be some basic information about um, quality evaluation coming, I think, as early as this fall. But the instructional materials portal itself probably won't be available for another year after that. And not all instructional materials will, of course, be able to be listed um, because it's going to take a while to do all of the, the various studies that will come in and inform that process. So that's something else that I think um, will be useful. Um, another aspect that I think is useful is, um, and it's, a, it's a, also a new state law, is there's a creation of these open source um, resources. So um, in addition to the, to, to the traditional proclamation activities, state's basically gonna uh, put out an RFP um, for a, a vendor to build um, resources specific to the state that they would then not be in the business of selling, that they would give um, intellectual property right to, uh, to on an open source basis that would then allow anybody, any private vendor, any um, public school to utilize, download free, and then build off of over time. Um, it's, a, it's, you know, it's in the model of open source software. It's, this is open source instructional materials. So um, uh, we're gonna, um, because of the way the rider was structured in this um, uh, biennium, that will um, also coincide with resources specifically um, in the SLR space. Um, and so that should just give um, our districts more options um, to, uh, in terms of what they want to purchase, what they want to um, deploy for their kids, um, uh, and hopefully more quality options. Um, and then, um, uh, and, but of course that will also take some time, so it um, may or may not necessarily be available until spring of, uh, or summer of 2020. I am also somewhat confused by, and I know this was not your doing, it was the legislature, but when we talk about that open source, it seems like a, a direct hit to a free enterprise system. It is, the agency in effect is becoming a vendor for, for materials. And if I'm looking at this as a superintendent and I have a limited number of funds from my instructional sources, and I see a, something that's okay from the open source, but the price is really good because there is no price, you know? And then I see something that's a very good over here, but a heavy duty price because as the board, we have made sure that that permanent school fund reflects a very good instructional resource material uh, funding. And we see that as an administrator, I'm gonna say, can't you guys live with this instead of going for this? And it just seems like that is a direct competition of the TEA, i.e. Uh, open source, against the, the publishers out there. And I'm not, those guys make plenty of money. I'm not, you know, like trying to lobby for them. But the whole idea seems like it could be a little bit a, a slippery slope.
Um, yeah, I mean, I can understand why um, why you might characterize it that way. I, I, I don't I don't know that I um, view it the same way. One, because it's actually not TEA that's the vendor. So TEA is contracting out for a vendor to produce. Um, but to compete resources. with. Yeah, so what, what TEA is doing is it's trying to ensure there's one additional vendor in the marketplace um, uh, beyond the existing set of options. Um, uh, and then the ultimate uh, goal of that is so that the, the I think, so that the taxpayer benefits um, uh, through that increased competition to drive costs down. So, um, uh, I mean, I, I, I can, I, like I said, I think I can understand why you characterize it the way I, I don't, I don't actually see it as anti-competitive. I actually see it as promoting higher levels of competition. And the, the thing, to, again, the thing to bear in mind about the open source resource, it's actually open source to everyone. Um, meaning that um, if, I'm a, if I'm in the commercial product business, I can immediately license the open source material, um, incorporate it into my own materials, um, uh, and then they begin iterating through it and then sell that. Um, so um, uh, that's, that's the way that it's, it's actually designed to sort of see even more aggressively the, um, the uh, options that districts have. That actually makes me more nervous. That, that the state would produce the material and then someone could take that material and then sell it? I mean, it's just kind of the way open source works in the software space. Um, you guys it, are kind of in another world for me, so. <laughs> well, I, 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 I'm just implementing state law. Implement, <laughs> you uh, are, you are, much. and I realize that. <laughs> I, just, I just don't, I have a very uncomfortable feeling about that. Thank you for your...